This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today, our special guest is Elizabeth Ehlers, uh, the director of Lake Champlain International, which is a very important and very fascinating project uh, and operation that we're going to explore. And hopefully, you will get a chance to uh, participate in. Welcome, Liz. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I want to start out with just telling us a little bit about yourself, please. Sure. Uh, so I was born and raised in Panama City, Florida. Um, when I graduated from college in 2000, uh, I had a friend at the University of Vermont. So a girlfriend and I decided it sounded like fun to come up here and spend the summer. And I never really left. <laughs> That's great. And uh, tell us a little bit about Lake Champlain International. What is it and what it does? And we'll go into some of the history, but just give us an overview of the organization. Sure. Uh, so Lake Champlain International is a federally recognized 501c3 nonprofit. And our, you know, our stated mission is a swimmable, fishable, drinkable Lake Champlain. Great. And can you tell us a little bit about the lake itself? You know, it's, it's geography, it's scope, it's maybe a little bit of its uh, history and importance to the region and maybe even the, the continent. Sure. Uh, so Lake Champlain, um, you know, really is a huge asset to, you know, both New York and Vermont, um, as well as uh, Canada, is not only a source of, of drinking water for several communities, um, but it's also, you know, one of the, the most outstanding fisheries um, for sport fishing, and um, provides a, an amazing source of, of recreation for all who enjoy it. And this actually, Lake Champlain International started with a fishing derby. Uh, it did. 40 years ago. Uh, so in 1982, um, there was uh, Bill Jacobus, who was a, a South Burlington resident and avid fisherman, partnered with the Lake Champlain Chamber of Commerce and pitched the idea of organizing and hosting a fishing derby with the express goal of stimulating economic um, activity and, and tourism in, in the area. Um, you know, their, their main focus was more on the cold water fishery, lake trout and Atlantic salmon. Um, and since, you know, the Derby has expanded over the years to now we include both warm water and cool water species. Um, you know, there's 11 eligible species in all for our Father's Day Derby. What is that abbreviation you just said? Uh, categories or eligible? Use? Oh, uh, cold water and cool water? Yeah. Yeah, so it's just it's how we sort of subdivide the, the different species of fish um, in Lake Champlain. You have cold, cool, and warm. How does the lake run? Is it, is it cold or is it warm or what is it? <laughs> uh, well, I don't, I don't know how far we, we want to get into, into the, the, the lake ecosystem. Um, but, you know, it's, it's an incredibly diverse habitat. You know, you have areas, inner bays, outer bays, you know, deeper reefs. I mean, it's just, there, there really is, is something for whatever interest an angler might have. That's great. Of course, we have champ living there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things, uh, uh, you told me about uh, before uh, today was uh, uh, what the Lake Champlain International does about education and, and ag advocacy. So tell us a little bit about what that aspect of the group is. Sure. So the, the organization has sort of evolved over the years. Uh, as I previously mentioned, it really was was founded with the goal of economic activity and tourism. And while that's still 
is a big part of, of our goal to this day. We've also tried to expand and, and realize that, you know, as an organization, um, we have a, a duty, a mission to help protect and, and restore uh, the lake as well. So we, you know, we approach it in, in several ways. Um, you know, youth education is, is a big part, going into classrooms, going to trade shows and, and connecting with, with youth who may or may not have ever been exposed to, to fishing. You know, it's, it's a big goal of ours um, because the, the sporting community historically, you know, they're some of the most important and avid conservators of the natural resources that they enjoy. Um, so when you sort of create a solid foundation of a sporting community, they, they really um, take it on as their own personal mission as well to protect that resource. Uh, we do a fishing pole loan program um, for folks who, maybe have never fished, maybe it's been years and years, um, they can come to us, we'll, we'll outfit them with, with what they need to, to go give it a try. Um, uh, we do presentations to other organizations, chambers of commerce, civic groups, um, just to, you know, highlight the opportunities available on Lake Champlain, but also um, to, to keep a spotlight on on the issues that are facing Lake Champlain, which you know, unfortunately, there there are quite a few. Let me ask you about this blue program. What is that? E L U E in all caps. What is that about? Yeah. So that was the program was um, the the brainchild of of James James Hellers, and he saw a, a big opportunity for. Um, education and grassroots action on behalf of uh, homeowners that, you know, you sort of have point sources of pollution, like we all, you know, have seen the pictures of wastewater overflows and culverts, you know, dumping into Lake Champlain, but we also have to remember, you know, you have all of these non-point sources, these, you know, homes with like a fertilizer, excessive fertilizers being used, or maybe it, it's just, it's simple things where we can go to the property and do an evaluation and make suggestions of just easy things that any homeowner can do, whether it be installing a rain barrel so that they can catch rainwater and use it um, for watering outside, um, redirecting downspouts. Um, you know, that's a small thing that can make a big difference in uh, the runoff from a property, um, building rain gardens where, you know, you can sort of plant specific species of plants that can better trap that rainwater and utilize it versus having it run off, run off of the, you know, your property and then through the streets where, you know, it enters our watershed. I understand people can get an evaluation uh, for free uh, from your group. That, that is correct, yeah, and, um, and we have that information up on our website if anyone is interested. And also, uh, I believe it's um, Burlington and Williston currently um, are offering rebates, you know, in the neighborhood of a couple hundred dollars to help offset the, the cost for the homeowner of implementing some of the recommended changes. We're recording this in the, in the middle of November, and uh, some many of the events have already passed. But I understand you have a a, a few events uh, that you have annually, such as a wild uh, a game dinner and uh, a fishing uh, fish cooking class and uh, fish trips uh, involving restaurateurs and local legislators. Why don't you tell us about some of those activities? Uh, so our flagship event um, that sort of started it all is the Father's Day Derby. Um, in 2021, we celebrated our 40th um, Father's Day Derby. And it, uh, it's a three-day event. It runs Saturday through Monday, covers 
you know, all of Lake Champlain, we have 13 way stations on both the Vermont and New York sides of the lake. And um, it's our main fundraiser for our organization. Uh, we draw about 5,500 anglers um, at last count. You know, they come from about 38 different states. Uh, and it just, you know, it's, it really, it, it's my favorite time of year. Obviously, it's a very busy time of year. Um, but I just, one of the best parts of my job is hearing the stories from the families who, you know, a father who started fishing it when he was just a kid, and they, you know, it's a family tradition now, and they have their own children that they're bringing into the father. Father's Day Derby and you'll get three or four generations all fishing together and it's you know yes we we do give out a, a significant amount of cash and prizes you know in the neighborhood of $150,000 um, but for the vast majority of our of our participants that's that's not really the motivation um, the motivation is really the tradition and spending three days together, you know, out fishing, if they catch a winner, great. If not, you know, it's, it's still, it's still a win in their book. Uh, then the little anglers derby. So that started um, as just sort of a way to give the, uh, the, the feeling of being involved in the Father's Day Derby for younger kids um, who maybe don't have an adult to, to take them out for the three days. Um, it's, a, it's a free event and Cheryl Dunkling over at Ray's Seafood, um, she's sort of taken it on as, as her pet project and she organizes it every year. She makes sure that, that every kid leaves with a, a free fishing pole. And it's just, you know, the last couple of years, Shaw Supermarkets has come on and they provide refreshments. And it's just, it's a great little one day event. You know, <laughs> there's certainly, no monsters weighed in, or we're, we're usually in the, in the hundreds of the pounds for the entries. Uh, but it's just, it's a really special free event for the kids. Um, our bass open. So, you know, a lot of times when people think of competitive bass fishing, the focus tends to be more down south. And a lot of people are surprised to, to realize that Lake Champlain is really a, a premier bass fishing destination. Um, so we offer an event with two, two person teams. Um, it's a one day event and um, it's, it's, it's great. Again, it just, it really highlights the, the premier bass fishing that we have at our, at our resource. And uh, the last one, the Champlain Basin Derby, um, that really, was created to offer year round fishing opportunities and um, sort of promote more like hard water fall and spring fishing because you know with the Father's Day Derby that obviously is is in June, um, but we just want to make sure that people know that you know Lake Champlain is it's a year round destination. Oh, I, you know, I said Lake Champlain, but I'm going to clarify. So the Champlain Basin, it's open to any um, public and legal bodies of water in the Champlain Basin, which is, a, you know, a significant area. You know, we're able to pull in Lake George, Lake Placid, Lake Bomazeen, um, a lot of like the trout fishing streams for, for those anglers that prefer that. That's a huge uh, bit of territory there. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That's excellent. And one of the things that we, we like to uh, ask about here on Positively Vermont are some of the issues that you are concerned about, you know, with the, the legislature uh, coming up and, and uh, various legislatures, I suppose, and, and uh, also elected officials who often watch. Uh, what are some of the, the hot issues? I know that's kind of funny with a lake, but what are some of the hot issues uh, that you're concerned about right now? Sure. Well, I think that we all unfortunately have seen over the past few years um, the, the number of uh, blue-green algae blooms on Lake Champlain just seems to be getting 
worse, more numerous each year. They're starting earlier in the season. They're lasting later into the fall. And it, it really poses a very serious health um, impact to those who come in contact with those blooms. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we've been working on um, along with a, a PhD out of Dartmouth-Hitchcock, Elijah Stommel, is creating uh, an ALS registry, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, because it's, it's his it's his theory that there is a connection between um, ALS and exposure to blue-green algae. So that, that was uh, a win this past year of the legislature agreeing to, to start that registry. Um, so we hope that, that will really uh, aid Dr. Stommel in, in his work and in, in showing if there is a connection or not. Um, you know, another, another big hot button issue is, you know, we, we keep hearing about um, these discharges of untreated sewage and untreated uh, stormwater into Lake Champlain, you know, and, and there can be, you know, there can be sort of two different scenarios, you know, we have to acknowledge that our, our infrastructure, it's aging, it's failing, it was never meant to handle what we're asking of it. And, you know, obviously, like we hear it in the in the national news quite a bit, but it's, it's a big issue in Vermont. Um, you know, the original storm systems, it, it was designed in a way where both uh, sewage and stormwater are being moved through the same underground pipe system. Um, and, you know, what you would want is to have those separated because when we get these heavy rainstorms, those systems are getting overwhelmed. And, you know, sometimes the wastewater plant operators have to make the difficult, difficult decision, you know, do they you know, open the valve, so to speak, and allow that untreated water to go straight into Lake Champlain or sometimes it's tributaries. Or if they don't make that decision, then what we're gonna have is all of that waste backing up into, into people's homes. So I understand the difficult position that they're being put in and having to, you know, sort of find a way to work with this, this failing system the best way that they can. You know, and that and that really, like, just like on the federal level, it's it's an issue of money. I mean, it's it's a huge expense to to be able to to make those upgrades. And what about the the heritage uh, aspects of it? Uh, getting people interested in the the maritime or the Lake Champlain the heritage aspects of, of your work. Yeah. Um, you know, for for us, that that a lot of that comes back to the Father's Day Derby and our other events. You know, I I understand <laughs> I understand. You know, some people are are not big fans of competitive fishing, and I I am sensitive to the fact that during the three days of the Father's Day Derby, you know, most access areas <laughs> in the state are are quite full. <laughs> Apologize for that. Um, but, you know, being able to offer that, that three days where, you know, it's just, it's fun. It's, and making sure that, that people, you know, can just come out, take time off work, take, take the kids away from the screen time and just, you know, be out on the water together. Yeah, and I think that when people get those positive associations and those and those fond memories, that it, it's something that they want to keep passing on to, to future generations. This is great. Well, having piqued the interest of our viewers, uh, this is a very important aspect of every Positively Vermont show. And that's how can people help? What do you need uh, from the viewers, from the general public, uh, from legislators? How can people help? Uh, Lake Champlain International and your good work. Well, th thank you. Thank you for that. I think sometimes people under underestimate the amount of power each individual voice has. And, and we've seen, you know, time and time again, where 
when people, individuals, voters take the time to, to pick up the phone, call their legislator, write them an email, like that really does make a difference. And I, I think sometimes we, we get that defeatist attitude that it feels like we're just screaming into the wind, but I can tell you it, it, it can move things and as quickly as, as we would like. Um, but please do that. Um, you know, uh, also t go fishing. If you don't, even if you don't want to go fishing, buy a fishing license because a big portion of fishing license sales go right back into fisheries restoration um, and the great work that the the Fish and Wildlife Department does and their biologists. Uh, volunteer to help out at at one of our events. Um, you know, the the Father's Day Derby. It's it's a huge undertaking and it wouldn't be possible without the volunteers that help. And you need, <laughs> there's no, there's no requirement or experience or knowledge for fishing. We have several different roles um, all throughout the event. And also donate, um, you know, where we happily accept donations um, through our website or by mail. Um, and that just, it, it helps support our year round efforts to, to continue the, the work that we've started. That's great. Well, that's really a, a, a good summary of how people can get involved. And uh, are the events such as the Fishing Derby now being scheduled uh, for 2022? Do you anticipate <laughs> yeah. all that coming in? Yeah, you know, um, they, we're coming in to, to really, our busiest time of year, um, which sometimes surprises people. But as soon as we close the books on on one year's events, you know, we immediately have to start planning for the, for the next year. Um, you know, uh, securing sponsorships, going to trade shows, making sure that that people know about us, know about the opportunities. You know, not just through through our events, um, but just what what we have available on Lake Champlain. Well, this has uh, been, been very interesting, and uh, uh, I want to thank uh, Liz Ehlers, or Elizabeth Ehlers, commonly known as Liz uh, Ehlers, <laughs> uh, the director of Lake Champlain International, and uh, we're going to publish uh, the website information, and uh, she's available to talk to you or your group or uh, anyone else about this rather fascinating topic. Uh, take a look out the window, and you're probably going to see Lake Champlain, perhaps, or one of its uh, many... Uh, waterways in the in its basin so this is really applies to just about everybody in the state and the region so this has been very fascinating thank you thank very you so much thanks liz and uh we'll get back to you in a while uh, for a progress report uh as uh the year uh moves on thank you i look to it. thank you dennis thank you this has been dennis mcmahon for positively vermont my guest has been elizabeth ehlers director of Lake Champlain International. Thank you for watching.